Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the Esoteric Teaching Community. Today's selection is an essay entitled Transcendental Ontology. The esoteric teaching is open source spirituality. What does this mean? The source code and algorithms of proprietary software are kept secret so that the developer can derive maximum financial gain from its exploitation. Open source software projects like Linux and Firefox publish their source code so that other developers can learn from, improve and validate their functions. Here, the objective is not maximum profit, but maximum usefulness and benefit to the public good. Similarly, the esoteric teaching is also software, software for your mind. The esoteric teaching is an ontology that tremendously expands and enriches the meaning of existence. When you enhance your ontology with the esoteric teaching, Suddenly, a great many things that formerly seemed random or senseless seem orderly and make sense. A great many experiences that you previously missed now become available to your consciousness. The transcendental ontological knowledge of the esoteric teaching expands your consciousness in every meaning of the term. The esoteric teaching is the science of consciousness because it gives the background information one needs to experience oneself as a spiritual entity. Everyone has spiritual experiences all the time. But without a transcendental ontology, you miss them because they will be meaningless to you. By giving meaning to spiritual experiences, the esoteric teaching helps you register them and bring them into consciousness in an orderly way. The original source code of the esoteric teaching is a collection of Sanskrit manuscripts written down between 5,000 and about 500 years ago by the master teachers of the lineage of the esoteric teaching. They were translated into English and published for the first time in the West by my personal spiritual master teacher. All these works are part of the Vedic spiritual literature but they share one very important distinguishing characteristic. They are works of transcendental ontology rather than ritual, philosophy, or theology. Ontology defines the categories of existence so that categories of meaning based on them form a logical, orderly system suitable for reasoning. In fact, ontology makes logic possible. Thus, ontology is the meta-knowledge that supplies the meaning of the meaning of ordinary language. It is similar to a programming language for thinking. Once you know ontology, you can develop a language and a logic that allows logical reasoning on any subject. The ontological works of the Vedic tradition are special because they provide a transcendental ontological framework for reasoning about consciousness, the soul, and spiritual experience. Spiritual things are different from material things. Material objects and phenomena are objective, while spiritual objects and phenomena are completely subjective and self-referential. Spiritual beings are living, conscious, and irreducibly personal. They are also eternal, and inherently multidimensional. Reasoning about spiritual beings using a language, logic, and ontology optimized for material applications inevitably generates wrong results. For example, if one tries to calculate the results of an experiment on water using equations and units of measure that model solids, the result will not only be wrong, but meaningless. Similarly, if we try to understand and reason about conscious, spiritual, living entities 
using reasoning and language developed for material objects, we will completely fail to arrive at meaningful results. This ontological conundrum is precisely what has stalled scientific research into consciousness and allied fields like psychology. Spirit is completely different from matter. Spirit literally resides in a different world, a spiritual universe with its own laws very different from the material universe. So if we try to understand spiritual entities with material language, concepts, and reasoning, we will not only reach wrong results, our results will be meaningless. In a word, nonsense. The esoteric teaching solves all this by introducing, for the first time, an orderly and completely scientific transcendental ontology of consciousness and spiritual experiences. It makes the source code for this ontology available in Sanskrit, English, and even in computer-readable OWL ontology files. Finally, there is a truly scientific basis for logical reasoning and research into consciousness. Gradually, we are presenting these concepts here and on the Esoteric Teaching website. They are not a secret, but those who want to benefit from them are given guidance on how to approach them properly. Just like if someone wants to understand an open-source computer program, we should make sure that he understands the programming language they are written in. Otherwise, he may make some error in understanding. The esoteric teaching is much more than a computer program. It is an entire operating system for the human intelligence. Errors in life are much more serious than a computer crash. So by taking care to introduce readers to the esoteric teaching properly, we are protecting them from potentially serious errors in misunderstanding it. So this is a very important post because it marks a watershed point in our work with the esoteric teaching. At first, I wanted to name this post um, Open Source Spirituality. Uh, but then I got to see that the actual point here was that the esoteric teaching is a transcendental ontology. That's what it is. I've been trying to find words now for many years, uh, English terms, existing words that could be combined into a phrase that actually describes what the esoteric teaching is. Uh, the esoteric teaching doesn't quite nail it. For one thing, the phrase has been used before by Christian writers and other philosophers and theologists such as Alice Bailey and so on that really have nothing to do with the uh, lineage of the esoteric teaching itself. What we've been calling the esoteric teaching is actually the world's one and only transcendental ontology. Uh, that's really the best term to describe it. So you're just going to have to get comfortable with these two big words. <laughs> transcendental means ultimately spiritual or beyond this material world. And ontology, of course, as we've been discussing many times, is your view or model of the universe, the context in which you hold your experience. So because the quality of your ontology makes such a difference in the quality of your experience, therefore, by adopting a transcendental ontology, one uh, is able to experience a much richer and fuller uh, experience of life than with a ordinary linear material ontology. So we want to make the source code or the original writings of the esoteric teaching available to everyone. On the other hand, we want to structure the approach to these writings so that when you do encounter them, you will be in a position to understand and benefit from them. So this has been our struggle. This has been our, our work for the last few years. And um, we have quite a body of work now based on this principle. Uh, but uh, we've really turned a corner 
with this concept of transcendental ontology. Because up until now, uh, throughout the world, there are many different versions of ontology or world models, world views, models of reality, whatever you want to call them. But up until now, there has not been a pure 